So for years, organizations around the world have made investments in technology adoption to help their people learn how to effectively use the tools at their disposal, from support desks to external consultants and more. But in April 2020, as I filmed this video, most of us can't go into an office today and we cannot hold in-person training to effectively teach our sales force. And over the past few weeks, we've seen a lot of organizations around the planet come up with some very clever and intuitive ways to leverage their existing people, technology, and resource or knowledge bases in order to deliver this incredible virtual training environment. Now, I want to share an amazing and relevant example with all of you next. You're going to hear from Dentsu Aegis Network. They're a 60,000 person organization based in the UK. And probably like most of you out there, they have a very small IT team that's also responsible for change management. In their case, it's three people who run the IT collaboration department. So these people not only invest in the technology that they roll out for Dentsu, but they're also responsible to make sure that people in their organization are effectively leveraging that technology. Now, while this is an example about technology adoption, I'd encourage you as you watch the video to think about the investments you've made in your organization the people, the knowledge bases and resources you've created, the technology that you have at your disposal. And how do you bring all of that together to take your support desk and reduce some of the time they're spending reacting and responding to the same questions over and over and over again and allow your users to self-serve? We're one of the largest media agencies globally. 60,000 people in 170 countries. We had to think really carefully about how we rolled out teams. We didn't have a lot of resource to drive this rollout. We only had a team of three people. By leveraging the third party tools and the extensibility of teams, we were able to build a chatbot to help people find answers. How do I do this? Where do I find that? We didn't have to have a big training team. And we've only sent one communications to announce the move from Skype to Teams. One of the most interesting things that we saw was the viral adoption. People saying, have you seen this product? It works really well. We started with a pilot of 5,000 users. We're now at 30,000 users. Teams provides many different business benefits. It has rejuvenated other existing platforms and technology investments we had. Teams becomes your front door for everything you do. It changes the game on many levels. So here with Dentsu, a great example of an organization who's leveraged their own internal investments and modernized them in a way that drove organic adoption of new technology. So let's again go behind the scenes here and understand how this evolution and journey happened within Dentsu. And so the first thing, before Dentsu even deployed Microsoft Teams, this was their version of support 1.0, if you will, is that a new user of assigned technology, whatever it was, doesn't need to be Microsoft, would send a question, a escalation, a ticket request, et cetera, to the IT collaboration lead, one of the three people you just saw in the video. And that person would in turn pull in information either from their own personal knowledge base, their brain, the internet, their peers, or internally created knowledge bases, um, or internal resources and knowledge bases, and then give that person an answer, right? So support 101, ask the expert. Then this evolved to support 2.0, which was the IT collaboration team within Dentsu decided they were going to take all of this information that they were personally just pulling from before and create an internal intranet page, which was a SharePoint site called WorkSmart. And now when new users asked a question to the IT collaboration leads, they could then point them to the WorkSmart page internally to get an answer on how do you learn how to use this technology, etc. So really just amalgamating and consolidating their resources into one single place for people to go. But the reality is as the number of internet pages grew, it became harder and harder for people to actually find the page, use it, etc. And then move to version 3.0. This is what you saw in the video. So Dentsu decided when we're gonna roll out Microsoft Teams, we already had this organic adoption in the IT group, which was the 5,000 people they referenced in the video. And they said, why don't we take this WorkSmart internet page and why don't we get that to render in a new way, modernize this investment, so to speak, and turn it into a bot in Teams. So now what happened, and they said this in the, in the video, is that the IT collaboration team put together this bot, they worked on it over the course of a couple months, the knowledge bases are sitting right here that the information was pulling from in the bot, and they said, okay, we're rolling out Microsoft Teams to, the whole, to half of the organization in this case, and when you have a question, your single point of contact is gonna be the WorkSmart bot in Teams. 
And what they did is they pinned it to the left-hand rail in Teams so users would, would easily be able to find it. And if that bot can't answer your question, it will automatically raise a, a ticket to the IT team, which in this case was really just a, um, a little a notification to a channel of their choosing. Okay, so really cool, simple way to reinvest this. And you saw in the video, they sent this one communication, which I've highlighted here. And over the course of four months, 30,000 people were using Microsoft Teams. No formal training required, which is unbelievable leverage of this asset right here. Now, VNext, here's what Densu was working on last we spoke to them, is they've already brought all this information into the WorkSmart internet page. They've already turned that into a Teams bot. Now here's the next phase of that is when the user asks the bot a question and it can't answer, can we automate ticket creation via ServiceNow that goes straight into the IT collaboration department? So I'd encourage you, amazing example here, but again, I'd encourage you to think about this beyond just IT, because there are many departments that you likely have in your organization that have support desks, that have frequently asked questions, and if you can reduce the amount of time these people are spending responding to those by allowing these people to self-serve better, that's a huge impact on your organization where they become less of a support desk and more of a service desk.